welcome back students so today we'll be heading to the functions right so we're gonna have the first startup lesson on on the functions right and do not forget to do not forget to to like subscribe and do what and and share you see and do abc as well have some water and feel free to pause if you want if you want to post the video you see and do not forget to and do not forget to to share the plug and i'll keep on providing now we have without wasting time let's let's dwell into into the topic right so to, the topic for today will be dealing with what do we call a function right now what is a function we'll say okay a function is a rule is a rule which assigns is a rule which assigns each x value which x value with only with only one y y value meaning we can have with only one y value meaning we can have as many x's as we have we can have as many x's as we have meaning we can have as many x's we want but those x's will be associated with only one one y value you see so we have different kinds of functions right especially at grade 11 especially at grade 11 level right and then this video caters for for grade 12 for both grade 12 and grade 11. now this is the the basic of a function the basic this is the basic introduction that you need you see so we have different kinds of functions you see so we have different kinds of functions now now uh on this lesson will be we'll be looking at the parabolic what we'll be looking at the parabolic function or 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 the quadratic quadratic function so this function is where it's it's well known as the parabolic function or or the quadratic function you see or what or the quadratic function you see so what happens when we have a quadratic function now we have the standard equation so we have the standard equation of of a quadratic equation so the standard equation of a, a, a quadratic equation is denoted as follows you see it is denoted as follows so y is equivalent to ax squared plus bx plus c you see so this is the standard right this is the this is the this is the standard this is the standard formula or the standard equation of a quadratic of a of a quadratic of a quadratic function you see now here's the question why is this equation written here known as as a quadratic equation we are saying okay it is known as a as an quadratic equation or a parabolic function why because of the highest power in this case it's is two so the moment you see an equation with two being the highest power it simply means that particular equation is a quadratic one it is a quadratic equation do you understand and the other thing the reason why we call this thing an equation is because of it consists of of an equal sign you see so we have the difference between an expression and an equation and an expression can be within within the equation so okay let's start here what is an exp expression by the way well say an expression will consist of what will consist an expression will consist of of constant constant values and and variables and variables so the moment i, I have two x it becomes an expression because of it is a component of a value of a number and and a variable right and then we know what is an equation an equation it has what an equal sign the moment you see something that has an equal sign we say that particular thing is an is an equation and in this case because of now two is my highest power i have a quadratic what i have a quadratic equation 
you see that's the reason why are we saying this thing it's it's a quadratic it's a quadratic equation right i just want to remove this so, so now here now here is that it is the standard form of of a quadratic equation right where c is our y intercept where c is our it's our y intercept i will explain the intercept right where a and p are our our, our values you see there are numbers a and b represent certain numbers right and x and y represent uh, represent our our unknowns now in this case you have to know this you have there are some few steps that we have to know about about a quadratic function right a quadratic function is a graph of some sort right it's a graph of some sort which can be represented by by two faces right either either by by a happy face or or a side face you see that's that's the shapes of of a quadratic function you see now what happens we we'll say okay we have what you call a quadratic equation we explain the standard equation of of our quadratic equation what you need to know about this quadratic equation is that whenever your value of a is greater than zero you are going to have a graph that that smiles you are going to have a graph with it with a happy face right and whenever you are a is less than zero you are going to have a graph with with a side shape these are what these are the shapes of our these are the shapes of of our functions you see that's the first thing so whenever the value of a is positive your graph will smile whenever your a is less than zero it will frown we have a side face you see that's the first thing and the other thing being that on this point if we look at the bottom at the, on this portion we have what do we call the tiny we have what do you call the tiny point this is where the graph changes you see so when i draw the graph from this point okay let me just try to find a blue color okay when i draw the graph from this point when i reach this point what do i do now i turn you see it changes that is the turning point and then we are saying the coordinates at the turning point we have p and and q right we have p and what and q p represents the x coordinate p represent what p, p represents the x coordinate of the turning point and q represents the, the y coordinate of of the turning point that's the first thing that you need to know right and then secondly secondly what you, you need to know it's what do we call what we have the shape we have done with the shape right? the second thing that we, you, you you need to know are, are what do we call the x inter intercept now what are x intercept the x intercept are the points where where the graph okay the x intercept are the point where the graph cuts the x axis so suppose i have a condition plane like this and then my graph is like this and then i have my x axis in this case and this will be my y axis so looking at this okay let me change the color looking at this point this is where my graph cuts this is where my graph cuts the x axis so when my graph cuts the x axis we call these points the x what we call these points the x inter intercepts right so the x intercept are the points where are the points where the graph cuts where, where the graph cuts cuts the x axis right and then how do you find your x intercept when you find your x intercept you let y is equivalent to, to z you let y you let y uh you you let y you you let y okay you let y so okay so you let y is equals to to zero for you to be able to find your, your x intercept right the same thing applies with y right now we have what do we call the y 
intercept right what is our y-intercept we are saying our y-intercept it is the point where the graph cuts the y-axis so the y-intercept is a point as a point where the graph where the graph cuts what it is a point where the graph cuts cuts the word it is a point where the graph cuts the y-axis so where the graph cuts the y-axis we call that particular point the y the y intercept right and then looking at this graph looking at this graph you, you can see that our graph it cuts the y-axis here so this is our y what it's our y y intercept that's our y intercept you see and then our x intercept is is the point where where the x is the point where the graph cuts cuts the x axis you see and the other thing that you need to know it's is the technique which is used to to calculate for the y intercept so how do we calculate the y intercept is that in this case you let what you let x be equivalent to to zero and then if you check it first i told you that your c is your y intercept so what do i mean by that when i take the equation let's let's try to verify when i take the equation okay i know that my quadratic equation the standard equation is y equals to equals to a x squared plus b x plus plus c so what do i do whenever i find my y intercept what do i do i substitute right whenever i find my y intercept i substitute i substitute i let x is equals to, to zero and then i substitute that zero in place of of x now i will have a into zero squared plus b into zero plus plus c and we know that any number multiplied by zero is is zero now i have zero a zero to the power two is still zero multiplied by a i have zero plus b, what is b times zero is zero plus c so i'm left with what with c therefore the c becomes my y my y intercept that's why at first i told you that c is the is the y intercept are we clear and the other thing that we had we said we said we have the turning point right? how are you going to calculate the turning point that's the first thing so i'm just going to show you how are you going to calculate the turning point suppose the turning point is here i have p in this case here i have i have q how do you find the turning point right so just simply know the x value which is p we have the standard equation of finding p we are saying p <laughs> We're saying p p is equivalent to what? We say okay, p is equivalent to minus p all over two a. So the moment you are given, the moment you were given the equation, you just substitute your b and your a, and then to find q, you substitute what? You substitute where you see you take the original this f represent the original function. You take the original function and substitute your your x and what is your x at the turning point that's your p you substitute you substitute p where you see your x you put what you put p right to get the y value at the at the turning point right and then the y the x value at the turning point is also known as as axis of axis of symmetry axis of Ultimate. The moment they tell you that they want to determine the equation for the axis of symmetry of this graph, you will say x is equal to, to p. You will give them the value of p. Why? Hence I say, hence I say the x value at, at the turning point is, is also known as the axis of symmetry. You see, it's also here, it's also known as as, as the axis of, of symmetry. All right now how do you apply that let's try to find a question you see let's try to find a question to apply whatever we have whatever we have learned you see and then i'm going to have some different lessons on how do you determine the equation of a graph that's the first thing secondly on how do you sketch the graph and then and 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 so on and so on but i want you to know i want you to know that at this point you look at whatever I just written on the on the screen the y intercepts you know the, the the turning points the shapes right whether it's smiling or it's sad and and the equation you see and then we have different kinds of 
we have different kinds of equations, right? So the first one, this is the standard form, right? We spoke about the standard. We spoke about the standard form of what? We spoke about the standard form of, of an equation, right? Now let's look at other equations. Now we have another equation which is represented as follows. Y is equals to A into X minus X1 multiplied by X minus X2. In this case, we know that A is our value. You see, the A represents a number, right? But your X1 and X2, these are your X inter intercept. These are your X inter intercept. You see, the value of x1 and x2 are your, your x intercept. So now it's in, it, we can say this is the intercept formula. You see, that's the second formula. And then the third formula, I'm still, I'm still gonna try to, I'm still gonna try to remove this. Okay. Okay, let's try to remove this. Mm, okay. We do this very well. We put okay, then we put okay, yeah. So now we have we have the formula. We have the standard formula. We have another equation which is still the formula in terms of in terms of the x intercepts, and then we have another formula in terms of the turning point. So let's look at the turning point. The turning point formula we have y is equals to a into x minus p squared plus plus q and in this case your p and q represent your you are turning represent your turning point which is p and okay which is p and and q and i want you to note on this that look here at the two since we said the first formula is the standard formula it simply means that if we take one of the equation either the second one or the third one and then we multiply it out we expand and simplify we will we'll get back to it simply means even if I take these two formulas, right, one of them, and then I multiply. When I multiply each formula, where well, it leads me to to the standard equation. You see, so you can find the standard equation using the intercept formula, or you can still find the standard equation using the turning point formula. Why? Because of it's a it's a standard formula. You see, that is the simplified version of 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 the last two of the last two formulas. You see, so <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Let's try to find a, an equation, a question, not an equation, and apply whatever we learned so far. You see, so let's try to to apply the equation, not to apply to apply whatever we learned. You know, the theory is too much. We you know. Okay, so let me get, let me go back. Okay, uh, let's try to. Okay, let's try to make. At least two pages you see where is it doesn't appear let's try to make at least two pages oh, okay now i'm able to do those two those two pages now let's just simply try to find a random a random question that we can be able to solve to apply whatever we have learned so far you see so i'm still looking for i'm still looking for a, a random a random question you see so I'm still looking for a random question, just you know, a simpler one at first, because usually I want us to, you know, go bit by bit. You see, go go bit by bit. Now let's look at question five. Now let's look at question five. You see, let's look at at question five. So what's the opinion at at question five? Okay, I'm gonna try and do this. Sorry, by the way. I'm gonna try and put this question five here, right? And then here, okay. I'm gonna take some of my part, okay. I'm gonna take some of my part here. Yeah. Don't know whether it will fit. No, it doesn't fit. Let's do this, okay? Yes, okay. Let's do this. Mm, I wanna do this, okay. Let's do this, and then here, let's do this. I will try by all means to listen. Okay, let's do this first. 
Hmm. Yeah. I see. Okay. Now we can. Now we can do this. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. So, what happens is that now we have question five. You see, now we have question five. So, what happens on question five is that we were given the function. Now, I want you to know that f at x, this thing is known as f at x, and f at x is the same as sy. It is the same as sy. It's a function. It is the same of of uh, s sy. The only thing that they chose to say f at x is to name the function. So suppose I have ten functions. I cannot keep on saying one one. The the first one we, I can name it f at x. The second one I can name it l at x, m at x. You know, peta at x. It's a matter of naming the equation. But this thing, all of them are equivalent to to y. It's the same as y is equal to. Now I know that by y is equal to negative 2x by y is equivalent to negative 2x plus x plus plus c now before we can continue i want us to analyze the equation i want us to do what to analyze the equation first right now what is the value of a in this case now looking at a we know that a is what we know that a is the number in front of x squared a is this number the number in front of x squared so what is the number in front of x squared on the given equation that's negative 2 negative 2 is the number in in front of f in front of what of x squared and then what is the value of b in this case the value of b in this case b is the number in front of what in front of x the moment i have nothing in front of x that simply means that i have i have one you see because one has no effect you see and then what happens the same thing applies to to c okay our, we have six. So what does my c? My c is our constant. So constant. This is my my constant. Right. A constant is a number that does not consist of of a variable. Looking at this, I have just a single number which is six. But whenever I have two x, it's not a constant because of it contains a variable. It becomes an an expression. But now six because of it's just a number alone, it's called a constant. What is the value of of my c? The value of my c is with six you see now 5.1 they say okay on 5.1 they say calculate the coordinates of the turning point so we are looking for for we are looking for the turning point we are looking for for the turning points and i told you that turning points you have your p and and my q so that is the standard presentation of of the turning points and then i told you for you to find p for you to okay sorry for you to find p, which is the same as the x at at the turning point, we have an equation, a standard equation for this, which is negative p over over 2a, right? So what am I going to do? I'm just going to substitute. Where I see p, I'll put, I'll put 1. And then where I see a, I'll put what? Negative 2. Now, what is what? Now, let's determine this. Right, so I have negative into one, okay, into two multiplied by negative two. Now we have a quarter. That's one over. That's one over over four. What did I what did I tell? I told you that to find your Q, which is your y coordinate. Remember, a point consists of an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So now, since you are looking for your Q, I told you that you take the x coordinate at that point and then you substitute into into the formula so my my q which is still my y coordinate at at the turning point is the same as i substitute the same as i substitute what is the same as i substitute i substitute p in this case right what is the value of p to one over four meaning where i see x where i see x i put i put one over four so now i have negative two into one over four squared plus one over four plus plus six now let's calculate this right so what is negative two multiplied by one over four okay what is negative two into one over into one over four squared plus one over four 
plus 6. Now I get 49. Now I get I get 49 over over 8, which is the same as what? Which is which is the same as which is the same as 6, 1, 2, 5. Alright, so it depends. If it's a long number, you just simply leave it as a fraction. You see, now my turning point, the coordinates. Now the coordinates, therefore, the coordinates, okay, therefore, the coordinates of my turning points, the coordinates of my turning points, sort of forgive me for the spelling. Now the coordinates of my turning points. Will be what? What is the x value? The x value is one over four, and the y value is forty nine. It's forty nine all over, all over eight. Now this is your the values of your turning point. You see? Now we have the second question, which is which is five point. You see? So I'm gonna try and move this. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna try and find space. I don't know where. Okay, let's hope. Okay, let me use this space. I hope you see. Okay, now we have one pin, 5.2. Now 5.2, that's a in determine your, your y intercept. And then we said in this case, the y intercept, what is the y intercept? The y intercept is it's C in this case. And what is the bit of C? The bit of C is six, right? But we can still let x. We can still do what we can still let let x be equal to, to zero. So what happens when we let x equal to zero? We will have y equals to remember we substitute zero in place of x in the what in the equation. I'll have I'll have zero squared plus zero plus six. So what happens? I have I have six. Mind this is what a, a, a y intercept is a point, right? This is the y. This is the y value. This is what this is the y value at at the turning point. I still need to determine the what. I still need to determine the x value. Now, how do I find the the x value? How do I find the x value at the turning point? So I just simply take this y value and substitute it into into the equation. What do I do? I take I take this y value and substitute it into into the equation for me to find what for me to find for me to find the x value at the what for me to find the x value at for me to find the x value at the what for me to find for me to be able to find the for me to find the x value at for me to find the x value at at the y intercept right but I want you to note. That we said okay. I want you to know that at first we said okay. At first we said what? At first we said okay. Suppose I have a graph like this. Just go and try to draw a graph. Suppose I have a graph like this. Right? We said the y intercept, it is the point where the graph cuts cuts the y axis. So this is my y axis. This is my y axis. This is my my x axis. Forgive me about the handwriting. Okay. Let me try to adjust this. Okay. Mm. Okay. I was just testing the pen here. Okay. So this is this is what this is my my y axis. This is my x axis. We said the y intercept. It is the point where the graph cuts. The y axis, and I want you to note what is the x value at my y axis. Remember this zero that I've written here. It tells me that at each and every point on this line, on the y axis, on the y axis, on each and every point on this line, the x value is equivalent to to zero. So on this line, we're saying the x value is equivalent to to zero, and this thing simply says. It simply states that at this x axis, on the x axis, what happens on the x axis, on this point, on this line, what happens on this point, each and every point, its y values, it's zero. So now, what do I do? What do I do to? What do I do? I know that since I have the y value of my of my my my, my y intercept, I already know that 
my my x value so it's zero why because of it first i said let let x is equivalent to zero the moment i say let x is equivalent to zero it tells you that the x value is it's zero so what do i have so your y therefore your y intercept or the coordinate of your y intercept is zero is to is to is to six is zero is to six now that's that is your y intercept in this case that is what that is your y intercept right i'm just gonna try to go back for for us to see to see the next the next question okay for us to see the next question so what happens on the next question on the next question we are which is 5.3 we are asked to determine the the x intercept now we determine the x intercept right so i'm going to try to analyze this so how do we find the x intercept here's a good question how do you find that how do you find the x intercept we said you let you let y is equivalent to, to zero for you to be able to find your y your x your x intercept and this thing simply means that that you are very with your, your your y value at those two points is equivalent to, to zero and then the highest power the, the the highest power represents the number of the highest power listen the highest power represents the number of x intercepts because of my quadratic equation has has the highest number as two as the highest number it simply means i'm gonna have two x intercepts or if i had a graph which x is x to the power three i know because of three is my highest power i have to have three x intercept the same thing applies with with the linear function when i have x to the power one it simply tells me that i have only one x x intercept but now because of we are dealing with x to the power two i have two x intercepts that i have to determine right so what do i do in this case i let y equals is equal to zero on the equation where i see y i put i put zero i'll have zero is equivalent to negative 2x squared to negative 2x squared plus x plus c you see and what do i do now right now what do i do now it depends right it depends on you you can use quadratic formula or you can you can factorize you see so uh, what do you know we have a quadratic what we have a quadratic form at grade 12 level you can not grade 12 at grade 10 at grade 11 level you will be using this formula known as the quadratic the quadratic formula for you to be able to find your x values which is which is negative p plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac all over what all over 2 to a now this is known as this is known as as quadratic formula so this is the formula that you have to know for you to be able to do it for you to be able to determine your axis whereas whenever you have x to the power whenever you have you have a quadratic equation you can use this form you see so what happens how do we use this form now you will say x is equivalent to what is the value of b in this case okay we said the value of b Okay, I have negative from the equation, and then the value of b in this case is negative. Okay, it's one. The value of b is it's one. Remember, we have written everything here. Now the value of b it's one. I'll substitute one where I see b. Now I have what plus or minus on the on the equation. So when I see b, I see b to the power two. I will say one to the power two. When I see four a what is the value of a the value of a is negative two and what is the value of c in this case so i say the value of c in this case it's it's six all over what all over all over two into into a what is your a your a is negative is negative two we see and then what do you do now we have x Okay, now you have x, so now you have x, and then you simplify. You have, what is negative times 1? We have, we have negative 1, plus minus. Now you will try to simplify what's inside there, the square root. To calculate what's, what's inside the square root. Now I have 1 squared minus, I have 1 squared minus 4 into negative 2 multiplied by, by 6. You see, now I have, I have square root of what? plus minus square root of 49 
all divide by what is 2 multiplied by I have negative I have negative 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 4 you see now note that on your calculator you cannot enter a plus sign a plus and a minus sign simultaneously at the same time it's impossible now at first you have to deal with the plus sign and then after you will do you will deal with with the negative sign what i'm speaking about i'm speaking about this thing here i'm saying you cannot enter a plus and a negative sign same time on the same time using your calculator so it's either you have to deal with the minus first or or the positive sign first right so now i'm gonna now i'm gonna continue right so i'm going to start with the one with the positive side first it doesn't matter it's just that you have to write both both in both 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 cases so i'll have negative one plus a square root of 49 all over negative four and here i'll have my x being equivalent to negative one plus square root of of 49 divided by negative four sorry here it has to be here it has to be negative in this case because of what i'm dealing with with a minus sign and when i press the calculator what do i get i get okay i have okay negative i have negative one okay plus the square root of 49 divided by negative four now i have negative three over two here in this case right and then for the second x what do we have right instead of the neg the plus sign now i have the negative side now i have i have two now what is the value of my x intercept therefore my x intercepts what is what are the coordinates of my x intercepts therefore my x intercepts are as follows the first one i will have negative three all over two what is the y value we said we let the y value be be equivalent to zero right and we already know that at the x exists the y values is zero you see the same thing on the same thing my other x intercept my other x intercept i'll have two to the power to the power zero. now these are my x intercepts you see so i have my y intercepts i have my x i have my x intercept you see so now let's look at at the next at the next question now let's look at the next question so at the next equation they're saying sketch the graph showing showing clearly all intercepts and the with the axis okay sketch okay this has sketch the graph of f showing clearly all intercepts okay we need to show the the, the intercepts our intercept with the axis and and the turning point now we are asked to sketch right i want you to note that we have okay still gonna wait a bit for this okay i want you to note that sketch and drawing are two different things when you are asked to sketch they do not they do not it doesn't matter on the scale whenever you are required to sketch you don't really you really need you to use a ruler but you don't have to show each and every point or to maintain consistency between the points the spaces that you will be you will be using meaning the, the 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 graph may not be drawn uh may not be drawn to to the correct scale right but the moment they say draw they want to make sure that the scale between those points it's 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 equal at at okay it's equal you maintain consistency whenever you you draw the graph but the moment this is sketch you can even show the x intercept only but the moment they say draw you have to show <coughs> each and every point you see now how are we going to draw now this is what i always wanted to teach at this moment so how are we gonna draw this right i'm, I'm just gonna try to remove this so that we can be able to so that we can be able to to draw our graph view right now the question now in this case we are asked to draw right so the first thing you will need a ruler and a pencil right ask us so what do you do right you will draw we know you will draw a vertical line which will be representing your your y-axis this is your y axis and you will have a horizontal line here okay let me remove this 
Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Let me. So, and then you will need another word. You will need to draw a, a horizontal line for them for your x axis. You see, I'm drawing a horizontal line. You see, and then now the first thing that you do, you plot the points. You plot the you plot the points but before you can plot the points you need to check you need to check the shape of of the graph now i told you here on this condition look here i told you here on these two conditions that when your a is positive when your a is positive you know that the graph will smile you see when your a is negative we know that the graph will will frown so looking at your a we know that your a is negative two therefore the graph will do what will frown you see now we know the shape of of the graph this is your this will be the shape of the graph why because of your a is less than is less than zero your a is negative right so the first thing that we do we draw the points we plot the points right how do we plot this point right okay now we start we can start with the x intercept or the y intercept now suppose I have okay, suppose I have my y intercepts. So how do I plot? I know that on this line I have I have zero, right? Meaning on this line my axis is zero. So I will start on this line. I have zero is two is two six, right? Because of in this case they said sketch, I do not really need to, to use a rule. So I'll say okay, this is my my six. Remember that is the y intercept, it will be on on the y line. You see, so that's that my six. That is my six, right? And then now I have to sketch the intercept. I know that my x intercept, the other one is negative, right? And then three over two is negative three over two is the same as negative negative three over two is the same as negative one pen point five. You see, that's one point five is two is two zero. That's one point five is two. Let's do S to zero in this case. You see, let me just try to write it properly. Okay, we have one point five is to zero. Ha! Ah, okay, we have one point five. Okay, we have one point five is to is to zero. Right? Mind. This is my my one point five, and then this is my y intercept. Remember. You see, now I need another x intercept. Another x intercept is just following that I have two is two is to zero. Now, suppose I'll have two somewhere here. I'll have two somewhere here. So that's my my two. So if we check this point, this point is zero is to six. This one is what negative one comma five is to zero. And then I have I have here I have what? And then here I have Two is two is two zero. But I'm not done. I'm only left with my turning point. Now let's look at our turning point. Let's look at our turning point. Now the turning point, my x value is one over four. Suppose one over four, which is one over four can be here. Let's say here it's one, one over four. You see, you'll forgive me. This thing is not drawn up to up to scale, right? That's my x value at one over four. I want one over four. I want the, the, the intersection of one over four or where these two points meet. One over four and forty-nine over eight. Forty-nine over eight we said is this number. So at least it's greater than what? It's greater than six. It's six point two five. Now I'll draw okay, I'll draw a dotted line. A dotted line. And I know that I have to be, I have, I have to go up, I have to go up because I know my turning point, it can be here. So I know it can be here, which means here is 6, 0, 1, 2, 5. You see, now how do I draw? I know these are the values of my turning point. I have 1 over 4 and I have 1 over 4 is to what? I have 1 over 4 is to 49 all over 8. Yes, so for the nine over eight, the only thing that I have to do, I know that this is my shape. I know that this is my shape. So I connect the points. I'll just and then remember you do this by hand. When you draw the shape of the graph, when you draw the shape, you use your 
you will use your right hand you see and now this is how the craft will will look like this is how your craft will, will look like so this is sketch so we are able to sketch the graph you know and then and then show the given points show the turning point we are able to show the turning point the the y intercept as well as the as, as the x intercept you see and our x axis you see now that's our graph and then we can name the graph our graph is f at what it's f at x like i said f at x is the same as y but the reason we are we just simply said f at x is because of we are trying to name the word we are trying to name the graph so a bit less so far so let's try to check the next question you see let's check okay no no, no. let's do this i want us to check to try and check the, the next question so let's do this we're still gonna try to go back Right. Okay. Now we are done with five point four. Now we want five point five. We want what? We want five point five. You see, we want five, five point five. And then after five point five, we have five point six. Okay. Now let's look at five point five now. Let's look at five, five point five. Okay. Let me do this. Let me try to open a new page. Okay, so we have five point five. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to to copy that to x squared plus x plus plus six, right? Which is still f at x. Now on five point five they say okay, determine the values of a k such that it has equal roots, right? What is meant by that whenever they say it has it has equal roots? You see? So we wanna understand that. So, the moment they tell you that something has equal roots, it leads us to, to nature of roots. To what we call nature of, of roots. So, nature of roots is as follows. It is, we have, we deal with the, the discriminant. This triangle known as the, the discrimi, is known as the discriminant. Right? Or, or delta. It is known as the, the discriminant or, or, or delta. So delta or the discriminant describes the nature. It describes the nature of, of the roots, right? How? So delta is denoted by this follow, following. Delta is B squared minus 4 AC. So what is inside there? What's, what's inside that square root of a quadratic formula is known as delta. That is our delta, right? And then whenever the roots, just simply know that whenever your delta is equivalent to zero, it simply means that your roots are equal. So you have equal what? You have equal roots. Whenever your delta is less than zero. And whenever your delta, okay, and whenever your delta is less than zero, we are saying that your roots are an unreal. You see, and then whenever your delta is greater than zero, okay. Whenever your delta is greater than zero, now we are saying we have what we have real roots. You see, so whenever it's less than zero, we are saying they are non real, the roots are non real, or they are imaginary. That's how we describe the news. So, this is algebra, that's algebra, okay. So, we are saying when delta is equivalent to. When delta is equivalent to, to, to zero, it simply means that we have equal roots. When delta is less than zero, the roots are non-real. And when delta is equivalent, is greater than zero, we are saying we have real roots, right? And when delta is equivalent to a perfect square, a perfect square, what is a perfect square? A perfect square is a number that has a square root. Suppose I say square root of four, I get to therefore for it is a perfect square right therefore so whenever you are you are your delta is equivalent to a perfect square we are saying the roots are rational we have rational roots we are saying the roots are the roots are rational right now what happens whenever delta is a non perfect square we are saying when delta is a non perfect square what happens okay let me do, let me do this 
sorry for that someone was at the door but let's just simply proceed right so we were on 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 on, on delta on the discriminant right and then we we'll say whenever the discriminant is equivalent to non perfect square what is a non perfect square a non perfect square it's a number that doesn't have a square root you see like for instance at three we cannot find the square root of three or two well we get we get you know decimals of some sort so what happens is that we are saying the roots are irrational in this case right now we own function but i just had to go back to, to algebra you see this is the discriminant and we have the equation for for the discriminant you see so now what happens is that in this case they say okay determine the values of k such that the roots of our equation has 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 equal roots. that the such that the roots of of these equations are equal and we said on for equal roots delta is equivalent to to zero so what do we do the first thing that you do okay it's it's 5.5 you see it's 5.5 right so what do you do you say okay the first thing that you do you state the condition right you state the condition you will say for for equal roots you will say for equal roots you will say for equal roots delta is equivalent to to zero that, that that's where you get your first mark by 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 stating the condition you know that for equal roots that is equal to zero right and then they say do our effort x is equivalent to to k right so what do you do you will say okay instead of effort x you will substitute what in place of effort x you will substitute the equation your effort x in this case is negative is negative 2x squared plus x plus 6 being equivalent to, to k. Now what do we do? We take everything to one side. For us to equate, for us to, we take everything to one side now, right? So what do we do when we take everything to one side? When we take everything to one side, we'll have negative 2x squared plus x plus 6 and then when the k when the positive k go, goes to the other side or when we transpose k it becomes negative k now that k is equivalent to, to 0 now looking at this that's your new equation right now what do you do now you were told that the roots are the roots has to be equal to 0 now we have to find the roots now right so what do we do we use delta we use the condition we know that our delta is equivalent to b squared minus 4ac. Now, what is the value of b here? We look at the value of b on this equation now. We know that the value of b it is the is the value in front of, of x, where b remains to be 1, right? Now, what is the value of a in this case? Your a still remains to be negative 2, because the a is the is the value in front of in front of, of x squared, which is negative negative 2 right that is the coefficient of of x squared now we have c now the remaining number which is 6 minus k remember k is a constant so 6 minus k now in this case becomes your c now you see 6 minus minus k you see now you have to find the value of k now what are you going to do you are going to do the following right you are going to say okay delta is equivalent to b squared minus 4 ac and you know that your delta in this case is equivalent to zero right because of this set for for equal roots which simply means your b squared minus 4 ac should be equivalent to, to zero sorry sorry for that okay now you will say where you see b you will substitute to one you will have one squared minus four into into a what is the value of a is negative Two, right and then you multiply by your c what is c c6 minus k being equivalent to to zero right so one squared is one so what is negative four negative four multiplied by negative okay negative four multiplied by negative two that's positive eight now we have plus eight into six minus k it's equivalent to 
to zero. Now, what do we do now? We distribute this, right? So we'll have one plus, what is eight times six? What is eight times six? We have, we have 48 in this case. What is eight times K? We have negative eight K being equivalent to, to zero. Now the question said solve for K. Now I'm looking for a positive K. I will transpose my positive K, my negative K, my negative eight K to, to the other side. Now I'll be left. What is one plus 48? One plus 48 is 49. And then I transport my, my negative 8K. I will get 8K. Now since I'm looking for K, what do I do? I will divide both sides by, by 8. It simply means that my K in this case is 6, 1 to, 1 to 5. And then this 49 over 8 is not the first time we, we see it. Now this, it is the value of K as we say as, as required. So we are required to find the value of k. Now that's your 5.4, 5.5. Now let's look at the last equation. The last question, by the way, and then that will be the end of our, our session. Now let's look at 5.6 and then we'll have, we'll have full up le follow up lessons on, on the topic as well as the questions. We're going to determine, we're going to deal with, to treat as many past papers as we can for you to be ready for, for the final exam. Now we have, now we have, we have 5.6. Now, 5 plus 6 is as follows. They say if f is shifted two units to the right and one unit upwards to form h, so determine the equation of h in the form of y is equivalent to a, okay, into x plus, into x plus p squared plus plus q. Now, okay, let me do this. I just want to make this thing simpler, man. Now, okay, let me do this. I just want to remove this. Maybe, okay. Okay. I just want to do this. Okay. Now, here we have 5.6. On 5.6, they're saying if the graph of f is shifted two units to the right. What is meant by that? They are saying, okay, they are saying if the graph of f is shifted two units to, to the right, you see, and one unit upward. So what is meant by that? Just simply know that if we move to the right, what do we do? When we move to the right, on your x, on the equation, suppose I have f at x, right? So when we move to the right, what do I do? On our equation where I see x, I want to move to the right, or minus. So when I move to the right by m units, m represented value, when I move to the right by m units, I will, I will subtract it my x, right? And when I want to move I, when I want to move upward by m units, when I want to move my graph upward, what do I do? I add to my to my to my to my function. Right, I will add m. So when I add m to our f at x, it simply means that I'm moving it upward. You see, so when I, I move it upward, I will add to the function to the equation. And then when I minus on the x, when I minus on the x, when I see x and then I minus on the x, it simply means that I move the graph to the to the right. Right, which means when I okay, which means Okay, which means now let's look at the shifts, right? Ah, it's no, it's also known as translations. That's the the translation side. It's also known as the the translations or or the shifts or the shifts. I don't know this pen. It doesn't want to write. Don't know what's happening here. Okay, now I'm gonna try to remove this thing so that we can be able to write. Okay, so what happens now? Now we are dealing with the translations, the translations or the shifts. We are dealing with the translations or the shifts, right? So this is where we'll be, this is the point where we'll be.